sorry about that. There was a little typo, but I figured it out. Okay, so looking at freckles, you can see that Jack has freckle, freckles, so he's got them, but neither his mom nor his dad have them. And then for Jill and her mom, they both have them. Okay? So looking at that, and this is what you might do as they're, as they're working on it around their tables, you can go around the tables and mark it for them on their paper. So we've got, you know, have them write up, have them do it on their whiteboard, which would be even better. Have them draw out this scenario on their whiteboard and use it um, to help learn this. So the first question asks them, how in the world can you have two parents that don't have a trait and then all of a sudden their child does? Now, most of them have had some kind of genetics or biology before, so this is pretty obvious that somehow this is a recessive trait that's coming through in, in the next generation. Let them struggle with it and then you can pull them all together and say, what are some of your ideas? How is this possible? Okay, and I'm going to erase all these terms here. How is it possible for this trait to come through? And they, you'll have a smarty pants that'll say it's a recessive gene, whatever, so say, alright, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by recessive? Well, we know that for a recipe, we get one copy from mom and one copy from dad. And that they both had two copies, so they each chose a copy to give to me and I got two of these copies. I happen to have freckles, so I got two copies of whatever that freckle gene is, which means that they had a, that mom had a copy of the freckle gene and dad had a copy of the freckle gene that they both gave to me, so I've got whatever this little freckle gene is. They both have one, but they must have another gene that's overshadowing the freckle gene. Okay, so we've got some other gene that's not allowing the freckles to be shown. And so this kind of um, inheritance is call, called autosomal recessive. Okay, it's autosomal recessive. There's a dominant gene, there's a recessive gene. Okay, and autosomal dominant recessive is a lot of times how you see it. Okay, and you want to define both of these words for them. So autosome is any chromosome that's not a sex chromosome. Okay, so it means it's not on the X and the Y, it's on one of the other chromosomes. And then recessive, that's the one that gets masked versus dominance, which is the one that's going to show up. I also like to introduce to them right now the genetic convention that we just pick a letter that has to do with the gene we're talking about. So in this case, I picked F for freckles. We put the dominant gene in a capital, the recessive gene in a lowercase. And that's just genetic convention, um, unless you're a fruit fly person or an Elodia person or a C. elegans person, and then you do all kinds of weird things. But for our purposes, that's what we do. Okay. Um, so they're going to fill in on number seven. The inheritance pattern is called autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant recessive. And then have them go ahead and do uh, number eight. And number eight asks them to fill in the genotypes of the individuals if you know it. So obviously we know ours because if it's recessive, we are in the left of the left. And since we know ours and we know the phenotypes of mom and dad, we know that they are both big F little f. And here is a good opportunity to introduce homo, they're the same. So this is a mom, dad, came, egg, sperm came together, that's called a zygote. When the egg and the sperm, the two gametes come together, it's called a zygote, okay? So this person is a homozygote, a homozygous. Whereas these are different. And so they're hetero, which means different, heterozygous. Okay, you want to introduce those terms. And in the case of homozygous, we need to be specific. Is it homozygous dominant gene or is it homozygous recessive? In this case, it's homozygous recessive. Okay. All right. So we've got um, the genotypes of them. Do we know the genotypes of Jill? Well, she also has freckles, so we know that she's little f, little f. And we know her mom has freckles, so she has to be little f, little f also. So no mystery there. So that is for 8A, do you know what Donald's genotype is? Yes. For 8B, do you know which of Donald's chromosomes carries which allele? So that's a good question. Do we know Donald is the big F on his pink or his blue chromosome? There's no way to know. There's no way to know. How could we tell? Well, we have to go look at his parents, see if we can track it through their line, right? Um, number nine has them do a cross. Now they can do it on their paper, they should do it on their paper, but also at their table. They can uh, grab their chromosomes and cross them if they would like, okay? Now, in these Punnett squares, these are called Punnett squares. I hate Punnett squares because as soon as students start putting that box down, they start plugging and chugging and they forget what the heck is supposed to be on the top and side of the Punnett square. So you'll notice in my student guide, at any time I ever write a Punnett square on the board, I put eggs 
and sperm. Tails and all, write it down so that students understand what the heck they're crossing. Okay, so you're gonna say, all right, so if, what we wanna know is, is it possible that Donald is Jill's dad, okay? So we say, all right, Donald, what kind of sperm can he produce? He's got a big F and he's got a little F and he only gets to give one of them to the sperm. So possible sperms, sperm, sperm's plural, um, big F or little F, okay? And then you look at Daisy, Daisy's got freckles, so the only thing she can donate is a little F A. And you can put two down or just one down, it doesn't matter, so she gives a little F. So possible babies, if these two came together, we'd have a big F, little F. If these two came together, we'd have a little F, little F. If these two came together, big F, little F. And if these two came together, little F, little F. So that's what they should have in that table on their thing. But emphasize again, a Punnett square is just so we can cross all the possible combinations of egg and sperm. So once you start using two alleles, two genes, two alleles in the egg and sperm, we want to make sure they understand. And I'll bring this up again. So looking at that, can you say, all right, can we find Jill as a possible offspring of that cross? Yes, we can. She's right here or right here. Yes. So the answer to that is, ooh, yeah, it's possible that he's the dad. So the freckles didn't give us any information. So Jack's frustrated. He's got to keep going. Okay, so the next thing you're going to look at is the blood antigens. So the A, the B, the O. All right. So don't tell them anything about the inheritance pattern. Oh, by the way, with the freckles, once they figure this all out, then you can tell them about the MC1R gene that's written in your instructor guide. You can tell them about the mutation and whatever. Um, and that's not by any means the only way you can get freckles, but it is kind of an interesting thing. It causes the melanocytes to clump. So you, you still make pigment, but it clumps into freckles. It's also consequently what causes the red hair um, and the red pigment in general. All right, so let's look at number 10. Um, so once they've covered that and you've had a little class discussion and introduced these, then you're going to go ahead and say, okay, go ahead and do number 10. So you're going to look back at Donald and Daisy. I'm going to erase all of this. Don't be this. I'm going to erase the person. Okay, so going back to our people. And I would encourage them to see how useful the whiteboard is. They can have this at their table and each time be like, all right, we're starting again. Here we go. we got our same setup. Okay, so we're looking at the table. We're going to go back up here. We're looking at the ABO blood type. So we have Jack is O, Jack's mom is A, Jack's dad is B. So Jack is O, mom is A, dad is B, and then Jill is O and Jill's mom is B. All right, so have them look at it, stew over it. Now some of them you're gonna have smarty pants in your class that know about blood typing. Um, but just let people struggle, let people talk about it. We do see there's something with, you know, we've got an A and a B, and then we've got something else coming out in the offspring. So there's some kind of dominant recessive going on. Um, same thing here. Excuse me. So once they've struggled with it for a little bit, then you can bring the class back together and talk about it. Okay, so maybe this O is somehow recessive, maybe, right? And so you get an A and a B, but the O is recessive. So at this point, you can have a little mini lecture on blood types. So I'm going to do it for you so you know what you're talking about. So on our blood cells, we have as part of the exercise. Oh, I need to check to make sure this is still taking just a minute. Yes. So on the outside of our red blood cells, we have what's called the extracellular matrix. And as part of that extracellular matrix, there are glycoproteins that stick out. And these glycoproteins are part of what identifies us as cell. And on red blood cells, there's a particular type of glycoprotein that we have labeled type A, or you can have type B, um, and that's really all. So on a red blood cell, okay, so here's our little red blood cell, it's a little dent in it, okay. On the little red blood cell, there's the possibility of having A type antigens. Now, obviously they don't look like A's, but I like to draw them that way. So if you have, if you make A type antigens, then you are type A blood. And that means that from one of your parents, you received a recipe on how to make the A. Now, oftentimes, we actually label it as immunoglobulin, which has to do with the immune system and recognition. Immunoglobulin type A, it makes immunoglobulins, makes your body make immunoglobulins type A. Okay, so you got that recipe and you make A's. Now, 
Likewise, if you get the recipe to make bees from one of your parents, then you will make, you call it here, bees on the outside. Obviously, again, they don't look like bees, but we draw them this way, okay? Um, let's say that one of your parents gave you an A recipe and your other parent gave you a B recipe. Well, these particular genes, one's not dominant over the other. We call them co-dominant because both are dominant. Neither one masks the other one, so they're both going to show up. So if you get an A and a B recipe, then your red blood cells are going to express both of them. So you'll have A's and B's sticking off. Okay. Now, let's go back up to these. If you only have A's on there, then it's, it's good to assume that both your recipes were A's. And if you only have B's, both your recipes were B's. So this is a genotype, AA or BB or AB. Now, somewhere along the lines in the evolution of humans, this gene got mutated. And so there is a gene that's very prominent in the population that does not make a glycoprotein, okay? It's a mutated form, and we usually label it with a little tiny I. Okay, it doesn't make an immune, it doesn't make a glycoprotein, so therefore there's no immune reaction, no immunoglobulin. And so if somebody gets an I recipe, they can't make an A or a B. They make nothing. Okay, their, their blood cells are clean. Now, the only way though to make nothing, right, is to receive two copies of that mutated gene. Because if you were to receive an A in that mutated gene, you're going to make A's. If you were to receive a B in that mutated gene, you're going to make B's. The only way to get no glycoproteins um, is to have two mutated copies of that gene. Okay? So those are the different genotypes, and that's the blood types. And there's a nice little table in your instructor guide that'll help you if you want to draw um, those. All right, so. Based on that, and we're going to call it co-dominant, so we're going to label that on number 10. Then once you've got that, tell them to go ahead and do number 11. So looking at our inheritance patterns, it asks, do you know what Donald's genotype is for both genes? So let's go in and actually fill out everything we know. So we know that Jack has type O blood, so what are the possible genotypes? There's only one, right? And you're, obviously you're letting students answer this, you're not telling them, okay? So, if he's little I, little I, what does that mean about his parents? It means that they each had to give him a mutated copy, which means they each have a mutated copy. But because mom makes A's, she must have another copy. And because dad makes B's, he must have the B gene, okay? And then we look at Jill. Jill is also little I, little I, but mom has B's, so she is carrying that little I that she gave to Jill but she also has a B, okay? So you can fill in all those. It asks number, or letter B, do you know what Daisy's genotype is for both genes? Okay, what additional information would you need? Um, and we know hers because her daughter is I, so we know she's got at least a B and at least an I. Okay, so in this case, we don't need any other information. Let's see. Should we get Jack and Jill? Where's my table? Yeah. All right. So then in number, number 12, they're doing another Punnett square. And it works the same way. So again, we're going to see if Donald and Daisy could produce Jill. So we're going to draw our eggs and sperm. We say, okay, Donald, what kind of sperm can you make? Well, you're going to either give it your B recipe or your mutated recipe. And then Daisy, she's going to either give it her B recipe or her mutated recipe. And then here's our possible offspring. So you can have that one, that one, that one, or this one. Okay. Oh, and by the way, we label these. This person is a type A blood. This is type B blood. This is type AB blood. And this we say type O. Okay, because they're clean. All right. So they, could, if Donald and Daisy were to get together, they could create B blood. B blood, B blood, or O blood. So dang it again, Jill could be their offspring. Okay. 
Um, all right, so let's see. Video antigen. Did I skip one? Oh, they have to do RH along with this, so let's back up just a second. My bad. So, we've got the ABOs. That's good. Let's back up from this because we actually have to do a double Punnett square. Um, let's talk about the RH factor. So the RH factor is actually, um, let's, let's label in purple what they are. So if we go back up to our table. I missed one. Um, if you say RH factor, Jack does not have it, but both his parents do. So he's negative for the RH factor, but both his parents are positive, okay? And then Daisy and Jill, I mean, yeah, Daisy and Jill both have it. Okay, so let's talk about the RH factor. The RH factor is on a totally different chromosome, okay? So you can see, uh, let's see, where does it say the freckles? Da, 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 da. So the ABO is on chromosome 9, and the RH factor is on chromosome 1. So we're going to treat them as totally separate genes. Students get blood types confounded so much because somehow to them, the like if you're A positive, that somehow that's all one gene, and it's not. The A is one gene, the positive is a totally different gene. So the positive is another glycoprotein, and it's called the RH glycoprotein. So you have another set of genes. If you get two working copies, this is the RH gene, if you get two working copies of the gene, you will make pluses. So let's say this person gets two working copies of the gene. Then they're going to make plus antigens on the outside of the blood cell. If you get a working copy and there's a mutated copy that doesn't work, you'll still make the pluses. Okay? And it's, it's not technically codominance because there's not another allele. It's just you either have it or you don't. It's almost like dominant recessive. And then if you happen to inherit two broken copies of the RH, you won't make it. And you'll be O negative, or you'll be RH negative. Okay? And there's a little bit of explanation in your guide about the RH factor and what it actually means. Um, uh, but it's, it was discovered by using rhesus monkeys, so it actually stands for the rhesus factor. And it's just another glycoprotein on, on the cells. But it is the one that can pop, uh, cross the placental barrier, and so it cause problems in childbirth. All right, so let's go back up here. Do we know more about this genotype? So we've got a minus there, so do we know what genotype they are? Well, we know they must be minus minus, right? And if they, if Jack is minus minus, that means both of his parents, they carry a plus because they're making it, but they must also carry a minus. So they're plus minus plus minus. And then for uh, Jill, we only know that she has a plus. We have no idea whether she's plus plus or she's plus minus. There's no way to tell, especially since her mother is also a plus. We don't know whether it's plus plus or plus minus. There's no way to know. And so that's where it asks on number 11, um, do you know geno the genotypes for days of growth genes? No, you only know it for the AB gene, the ABO gene. You don't know it for the rhesus factor. And so you have to look at grandparents or other children or something, okay? So we don't know what she is. All right, so if that's the case, what we actually label them as in the table is plus question mark, okay? All right, so now let's do our um, Punnett square. So looking at... Donald, what kind of sperm can you make? Well, in this case, uh, one, uh, let's see, they only one and then I come to Donald. Okay, so in this case, each group is just going to pick a label. They're, if they label their chromosomes, oh, let's see, I'm using the white race markers label the one and I come to Donald. Oh, my table's actually not big enough for the two. That's funny. If they label them, they can just practice it on their table, and that's why I had it as a two by two. Is if they label it and then just make the gametes, they can practice on their table. But really, what would the table look like? You have to say, okay, Donald, he's going to give one of this chromosome pair, and he's going to give one of that chromosome pair. So really, the possibilities of him is he could give the B and the plus. He could give oh, this is a sperm. <laughs> 
He could give the B and the minus. He could give, oops. He could give his little mutated I and a plus. Or he could give his little mutated I and a minus. So if you bin the data from all your students, if they each just pick two, and you bin it, you can get this on the board, or you can just tell them to expand it in their student guide. I should probably just expand it. But I don't want to give it any way. Um, and then for Daisy, same thing. She could give her B and the plus. She could give her B and the we have no idea what it is. Question mark. She could give her little I and the plus. Or she could give her little I and the question mark. So there's actually quite a few different offspring that they can produce. And I'm just going to stop writing the I's and just write the B's if that's okay. It's just save time. So this would be a person with B plus blood, right? This would be a person with B positive. This would be a person with B positive. This would be a person with B positive. Okay, so let's go to this one. This one's going to be a person with B definitely positive. We don't know what the genotype is. This is going to be a person who we don't know, could be B positive, could be B negative, because we don't know what that other allele is, right? This is going to be B positive for sure. This one's going to be, we don't know, could be B positive, could be B negative. Okay, and then here we go, B I plus plus, B positive, B I plus minus, B positive, I I plus plus, O positive, I, I plus minus, O positive. Okay, B, I plus, we don't know, is a B positive. Uh, B, I minus question mark, could be B positive, could be B negative. I, I plus question mark, it's going to be O positive. And then I, I minus question mark, could be O positive, could be O negative. All right, so we don't know because we don't know what the other parent, or we don't know what the other allele is. So looking at this, is it possible that Jill is the offspring of them? Well, what is Jill? She is O positive. Are there any O positives on here? Well, yeah. There's lots. Okay, O positive, O positive, O positive, possibly this one. So definitely possibility. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so let's then, once they've done number 12, um, then you're going to say, okay, let's look at another gene, because dang it, we got to save this romance, and we haven't solved it yet. So. Now we're going to look at color vision. Let me make sure it's still recording.